Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. A warm welcome from Hong Kong. As you can see, we are live from Art Basel Hong Kong show floor. It's incredibly exciting. Because we have Patrick's undivided attention over the next 45 minutes or so, uh, we've made this a live Zoom. So please post your questions in our chat box comment as you wish, and we'd love to revisit those questions at the end of the walkthrough, if we have time. Additionally, up to your discretion, whether you want to keep your camera on or off, uh, we really wanted to encourage this human connection as best we can over our virtual platforms. Um, great to see you all. Hi, Patrick. Hello, Megan. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, Patrick, how are you? you and I'm how have fine. you found the show so far now that we're on day three i feel wonderful finally we have a real life physical art fair i'm here and i've discovered some new work and new artists fantastic some of which we're going to see today yes which is incredibly exciting i'm sure more most of you will know patrick's son uh but for those that do not would you be able to introduce yourself and your foundation? Because it does have quite a particular focus. I'll be happy to. I'm Patrick Sun, the founder of Sun Pai Foundation. We have a special focus in LGBTQ related art, and we primarily collect work for exhibition. And today I'm going to show you some of my favorites at the Art Basel Hong Kong. Fantastic. Can't wait. I think now we'll head to our first stop. We will be flying to Seoul. So P21 is such a great young gallery and always showing quite cutting edge artists. And that's exactly what I mean when I see, when I said I have been introduced to new artists through the fair. Yeah. I would not have known of this fabulous artist, Hanyu Choi, if not for Art Basel Hong Kong. So tell us about the work and why it's the highlights. Well, Hanyu Choi is an artist from South Korea, and he typically does sculptures in the minimalistic style. Hanyu would infuse a gay narrative into his work. And here we have four sculptures, which are inspired by Hanyu's friends from the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transsexual community. Originally, Hanyu wanted to name them after fashion brands or a special relationship. But at the end, Hanil named them after the real name of this person who inspired these sculptures. And each sculpture would stand proud, symbolizing how the queer community no longer have to hide in the corner. They can come out, stand tall, and be proud of their life, their profession, and their contribution to the society. So important. And each Sculpture would have one fashion item from the particular person who inspired it, including a fan from Chang, a famous gay club in Korea. Have you been there, Patrick? Uh, my partner has been there. <laughs> He's the DJ. <laughs> and then we have a, a cap, and then we have a handbag, and a cap also with a necklace. These are all very symbolic things that are personal to the person who inspired the artwork. Yeah, it's really about the individualization, isn't it? It's yes. In a way, Hanel Sun shares the mission of Sun Pa. We yeah. want people to be proud, yet being true to themselves. That's so important. Thank you. We may carry on walking a yes. little bit. There's so much to see. There's so much to see right. and so many questions. <laughs> so tell me, uh, what made you start collecting? Well, I started my foundation actually not too long ago, year 2014. I decided to combine my two passion. One is in promoting equal rights for the gay people. Yeah. And I also have a strong interest in contemporary art. And I decided to combine the two passion. And therefore I have started the Sun Pai Foundation you know, with a mission to promote diversity and inclusion, raise respect for the gay community through yeah. exhibition of art. It's so important. And why um, do, you, do you only uh, collect LGBTQA 
artist. Ah, the term gets longer and longer, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Um, actually, our collection falls into two categories. The first category, as you mentioned, would be people who identify themselves, you know, as the term gay, you know, uh, gay artist. Uh, but we also have a second category, uh, which are straight artists doing gay theme work. For example, we have the Japanese artist Morimura, who acts as the Yuku Mishima in a moving video. Oh, wow. Yes. And we also have work by Nan Golden, uh, her famous seminal work uh, titled The Other Side, and which is where I got inspired for the title of this walkthrough called Significant Others. Oh, of course, of course. And how big is your collection? Well, Megan, I can honestly tell you that after 200, I stopped counting. <laughs> because, Sign of a true collector. Well, because, you know, after 200, it's enough to serve as the base where the curator of the show can work on. Yeah. So, oh, we're here. We are here. So we are now moving to Los Angeles. And we'd love to introduce you to Commonwealth and Council. And this booth, I have to say, is extremely moving. It's amazing that you've chosen this. We have two wonderful artists here. The, the first is Kang Sung Lee. Kang Sung was born in South Korea and now lives in LA. And Kang, Kang Sung Lee, I think of him as a very hardworking artist because he uh, does intensive research in public and private ar archive with a special attention to the queer legacy in art history. And he takes inspiration from icons like David Wojnarowicz, which is where uh, this work comes from. It was originally a photo by David, you know, talking about the urgency and desperation of the AIDS pandemic. When I look at this, you know, yes, I see the desperation then. I also see hope, especially nowadays when we have COVID. While we have this serious illness pervading every corner of the world, yet I think this too will pass. And this is the wonderful point about enjoying artwork. It gives you hope. Yeah, it's very poignant at the moment. And we also want to show some other works of Kang Sung Lee, uh, which he got inspired by Zhang Bongzi, another important artist. Zhang would typically take self-portrait, like selfie, in front of landmarks like the Eiffel Tower or the Statue of Liberty. And here we have two works, one with the background of the Canoe Mountain and the other one with the background of the Big Buddha of Kamakura. Now, Kang Sung Lee laboriously reproduced these uh, works by graphite. Wow. And instead of reproducing exactly the same way, he would smudge out the person. You know, we don't see the face and body. And as if they disappear in a puff of smoke. And to me, it's a very powerful and quiet way of telling people how the queer people, especially the Asian American, are being effaced from the mainstream history. So these are very important work, and I'm glad that I was able to see them at Art yeah, So delicate, beautiful. Another artist we are here to introduce to is Kerry Yamaoka. You see these uh, hangings on the wall? These are hybrid works, you know, which is a combination of painting, sculpture, and drawing. Yamaoka belongs to a lesbian activist collective called Fierce Pussy. And Carrie's work embodies defects, uh, errors, and negotiation of chance. This is an example why it's important to come to the fair because while you look at this work from the OVL, you might not realize that actually it's reflective. The camera may be able to see me. The artist is inviting the environment, the surroundings, and the audience into the view. And I remember Carrie once mentioned that her work is compared to, can be compared to developing photographs in a dark room. Mm. It's the moment when the image starts to emerge, and yet you still cannot quite see the real thing that Carrie finds most interesting. And looking at this from a queer angle, I can also relate to the process of coming out. Yeah. You know, when you first come out, it's all this anxiety, uncertainty, you know, that I also find most intriguing. I have to say, I love this reflection. You see, so. that's what I mean, like how the artist embraces errors. 
yeah. defense, yeah. negotiation of chance. Yeah. Great find. And I do believe you may have purchased one of this artist in particular. Well, I have uh, purchased both Kerry Yamaoka and also Kang Song Lee. Uh, I think these are very important artists and I think we would see their name coming up very frequently in future. And had you been studying the artists, researching artists for some time or did you just discover at this show? For these two artists, I discovered them in this show. Oh, really? Yes, yes. Great to hear. And whilst we're talking about acquiring, I know you're also quite particular about the way that you collect and acquire a work. Yes, um, I like to think our acquiring process is democratic. <laughs> we have a small team. Uh, unfortunately, most of them are in Taipei now and could not join me at Art Basel. But we talk almost every day. And then when we look at a new work, the first question that comes into our, our mind would be, how does this work in an exhibition? Yeah. Because we primarily collect to exhibit, you know, there are a few exceptions that I hang on my wall, but mostly we will look at the work and see, hey, what message does it say? How does this work in our future exhibition? Mm. Do we want people to see it from this angle, a queer angle, maybe a straight angle? So these are questions that come to mind and I would discuss with my colleagues. And so there's quite a curated approach. You, you think about the relationship between galleries and artworks. Yes, in a way, we are the curator of our own collection. Yeah. Uh, and to reflect our mission to promote diversity, to also try to collect uh, works from different mediums, like sculptures, painting, mm -hmm. performance, art, installation. So in fact, this time I'm also interested in NFT. <laughs> I want to find oh, out yeah. Yes, there's one gallery that uh, does that work. And so is that why the main part of your foundation and you do kind of put together exhibitions all over the world, particularly in Asia? Uh, mainly in Asia, because I think in Asia, this is where uh, gay rights has a long way mm. to go. And that's why we try to do this organized, uh, this exhibition to raise the awareness uh, and visibility of our community. So good. So now we have just arrived in Berlin. Oh, to be in Berlin. We're in Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this gallery is called Perez Projects. And again, one of Patrick's highlights that we will talk about. I love Perez Project. You know, they always bring important artists to our attention. And today I want to particularly talk about two artists presented at the booth here. One is Ed Minoliti. Minoliti comes to my mind as uh, somebody who talks about opposite values. You look at these rich, exuberant and colorful painting, but yet they have a very serious perspective behind them, talking about you know, the gender issue, sexuality, and minorities. If you remember, Ed was exhibited at the Venice Biennale in 2019. And that year, the theme was May You Interest Live in Interesting Times. And I believe that Minnelli's interpretation of interesting time is a futuristic utopia mm -hmm. where the male and female binary system no longer exists. And I mentioned opposite, you know, because minority often challenges what the Western perspective view as opposite, such as nature against culture, masculine and feminine, seriousness and playfulness. Mm. So these works seem playful, but they have an important message behind about gender, feminism and the queer perspective. And you have these in your office, right? Yes, I have one work on minority. As I said, I don't read, I don't hang my work up at the office, but Minnelli's work make everybody happy because it's like playful and fun. I imagine. I also want to talk about artists for Manuel Solano. Uh, there is something sad and poignant about this artist. Manuel identifies as transgender and Manuel is blind. Can you imagine a blind person doing this meticulous painting? And they are beautiful, but these are painting from memories. And you look at them, 
and you wonder what happened in between. Mm. He was not blind before, and then he fell ill uh, and got blind because of the HIV-related oh, symptoms. But he's very brave. He continues to work. Yeah. And I'm so glad that I saw important work and a beautiful work here at Art Basel. What a story. What a story. Thanks for sharing. So well, year and a half impacting your collecting journey. Have you engaged quite a lot with you know the first online viewing rooms, gallery online viewing rooms, and has that affected your your collecting tastes or choices? Oh uh, yes, it definitely has. You know, like everybody else, we have to adjust this new way of life. Uh, we bought from OVR. Uh, in fact, we bought from uh, Art Basel Miami. Oh, great. Uh, but the difference, I think, is we have to rely on trusted sources. Um, with paintings we cannot see in person, we need to know that this is an artist that we are familiar with, or at least it's a gallery that we know very well. Yeah. So I bought uh, some work through OVR. Uh, but we also bought more work, which is uh, which are easy to translate digitally, like video or photograph. Mm. Yeah. So it has affected. That's so interesting. Um, so here we are at, in Tokyo, and as Patrick said, gallery relations being so important for him. We're uh, with Nina from Taki Ninagawa. Um, tell us about this booth. It's really quite spectacular. This is one of my favorite booths at Art Basel Hong Kong. This is an updated version of Jan Vo's seminal work at the Venice Biennale 2019. Titled All Works, I would think of these as if they are self-portrait. Jan's work is essentially autobiographical, and this work is a good example of it. Instead of having his personal view alone, he invites collaborators like his father, Song Vo, his professor, Peter Bond, his lover, Heinz Peter Nays, and his nephew, Gustav. We look, we're looking at these large paintings made by his professor. Peter Bond once commented, Jan, that suggests that he should quit painting. Really? <laughs> but now we have a reversal of role. The professor is invited to participate in the former student's uh, exhibition. And we also have photograph taken by Jan's lover, uh, Heinz, of Jan's nephew, Gustav, which to me symbolizes youth, emancipation, uh, and self-awareness. Yeah. Uh, on the wall, we also have two calligraphy by Jan's father, Fong Bo. And the writings on the wall says, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Now, this is what I mean by self-portrait. You know, we don't think of a self-portrait as just a painting. In fact, we should think of it as how you're being seen from different angles, from the perspective of your family and friends. Mm. So this is a very important work, and I'm so grateful to this gallery to bring this work here. Don't forget, we also have, uh, you know, some sculptures, and display, which is all part of the installation. I actually remember seeing uh, Yan Fo at M Plus Museum a couple of years ago. Right. It's great to have it in Hong Kong. Yes. Uh, I remember talking to Yan once, you know, we were having dinner and were I- Were you starstruck? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I was gushing with, with enthusiasm Imagine. because I recently bought a, uh, this work called We the People, you know, oh, which yes. is a one-to-one -one replica of the Statue of Liberty. Uh, and I saw Yan, yeah, you know, I couldn't wait to talk to him about how he interpret the world, you know, whether it's like international commercialism or how liberty can be transferred to different cultures or mm -hmm. different geography. I was too enthusiastic, you know, but then Yan would be <laughs> in his very cool way, you know, we were like, look at me calmly with yeah. bright eyes and smile and said, Patrick, my work do not give answer, we post questions. <laughs> so this that. is one where I want all my friends to uh, have a think about, you know, what does the artist want to convey to us? His relationship with his father, with his professor, his lover, 
So it's a very interesting yeah, work. Family relationships. So we have a little surprise for you. We're very lucky to have Nina with us via iPad. Hello, Nina. Thank you for bringing this wonderful work to Hong Kong. Thank you so much, Patrick. Thank you so much for having us. Oh. Uh, you know, we miss you a lot, Nina. <laughs> Thank you, and Thank see you. you soon. That was great work. I think a museum should get it. Absolutely. Just plug that in. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine this. Every day. Actually, when you come to our fair. Right. Um, I mentioned earlier that, you know, we also this. It's very important to have collection. Do not label anybody. Just the vision. I will talk from as uh, you her drag performance, you talk about gender and minority, which is discriminating. But here we have uh, a nice way I love, Ali Moholy. Or if rooms, you know, to decorate herself. If you went to Venice Biennale in 2019, you would not miss her work, which are huge movements and look directly at the audience, like challenging you to look away. It's her eyes, isn't it? Yes, yes. And Captain. to me, you know, uh, I think it's it's a very brave work. It's how people are, are surviving and struggling and be true to themselves despite discrimination or oppression. Really highlighting that community, yes. which is much it's a needed. Minority within a minority, you know. Yeah. Uh, Holly by herself, not as male or female, maybe not even as LGBT, because I remember Holly above all else doing any sexual identity. I'm afraid that Blam brought her to Art Basel, Hong Kong. Yes. And while we are familiar with Mahali's foot, one one people go. Mahali brought a painting here. Thanks to Pearl Lam, you know, it's uh, this work uh, that we will soon see. A great painting by Zanelli Mahali. So what project are you working on next? Where can we find you? Oh, well, you can find me in Hong Kong. <laughs> Most of all, my works are stored in my warehouse, uh, but there's some in Bangkok and Taiwan because that's where we have our exhibition. And on that subject, we are bringing our next show to Hong Kong next year. Uh, the 22 Hong Kong would host gay game. The first time oh, nice. in Pong, gay Olympics comes to Hong Kong. And we want to do an uh, art show to echo this important event. So we will announce very soon that we will have a big show in Hong Kong at the fourth quarter of 2022. Fourth quarter. I think 2022 is going to be a big year. Yes, yes. And we look forward to that. And so you spend a lot of your time in Hong Kong between Taiwan and Thailand, right? Yes, yes. Well, um, I used to spend one weekend in each city, <laughs> which seems like impossible nowadays. Yeah, and the art ecosystems there are so diverse and really developing, aren't they? Yes. And people ask me, you know, like, oh, yeah, you do the show in 
Bangkok and Taipei, which are already quite liberal. You know, are we are we preaching to the converted? But yeah. I tend to differ in opinion because while these places are yes more accepting, we still have to try harder to promote rights for gay people. I want to quickly point out one work by Wolfgang Tillman of uh, David Swerner. You see, this is the wonderful thing about coming to an art fair. Yes, you, you just know, you just walk around and then you just notice, <laughs> discover things. It's a great work by, by Tillman. Is Tillman's in your collection? Yes, he is. It has to be. And I mean personally, he's a yeah. Yeah. So here we're ending in Hong Kong, our home turf, which is really quite a way to end. And again, great selections of artists. So tell us about Blind Spot. Well, Blind Spot is a very important gallery in Hong Kong and consistently presents great exhibition and bring important artists. Formerly known as Victoria Sin. The fact that Victoria changed her name a non binary, non con term, speaks about a lot about how she thinks about the gender issue. Mm. Uh, and I think I should ask the expert to talk about uh, yes. Xin Kin. We and do have the expert. Why? Here. Mimi, would you like to come and say a hello? So this is Mimi, the director of Blind Spot. Hi everyone, my name is Mimi. I'm the director at part of Mind Spot Gallery. Um, actually, I know you like this work a lot. I love this work. Mm -hmm. All the symbols here, it, it brings us. This is the work by uh, artist Xin Wai King. Xin is a gender non binary artist who uses drag performance to discuss the binary notion of gender um, and a stereotype. So, this, this dark fun bag consists of four balloons stuck in the back, hang on an extra size hanger, and uh, this Barbie figure captures the essence of the stereotype idealized image of the female body. And uh, apart from this work come by, we also have two, two... Mention something too. I like the fact that it mirrors how people age, right? As the balloon loses air. <laughs> yeah, indeed, indeed. All, yeah, all all press display, much <laughs> like this one. I love seeing there's a big sense of humor there. Very. Uh, apart from that work from back, there are also two works of face wipes here. And uh, these two face wipes are a record of the makeup used by C, designed by C in, um, in the film and live performances. Um, so they are at the same time records of her performance and film. And as well as a standard of uh, These are archival material. This is like a weakness of the performance and how she changes. In fact, I think her views change too, like a developing, you know, uh, a perspective of the society and gender issue. Yeah, very much so. Uh, I know Patrick also would like to talk about this work by Trevor. Trevor Young is a Hong Kong artist who uses botanic, ecology, horticulture um, as metaphors to talk about human conditions and relations. So this is a work called Night Mushroom Color. Um, and you can see this work is a mixed media work combining electrical converters and also light, light lights in the shape of mushrooms and, and, and horror. And I think Trava uses mushroom as a motif because mushroom usually lives in dark, hidden places. And the artist using the living condition that to echo that of his own inner world. And I particularly like the way he uses mushroom, you know, which is a, um, a species that would survive in any corner of the world. Yeah. Uh, reading it from a quiz perspective, you know, I could see how it relates to the minority struggling, surviving, 
And I also like the play of the danger element there. I mean, these are like adapters, right? Yeah. <laughs> and while they're supposed to illuminate your way at night, it's also a possibly a fire hazard element. I'm sure they're pretty safe, but yeah, the they're suggestion, safe, they're <laughs> the suggestion, yeah. Uh, and I especially like how Trevor would focus on what I say, uh, I would call as the overlooked and the underprivileged. And she has, he has a very sensitive way of uh, sharing personal experiences and intimacies. That's what his practice is about. Well, thank you so much for introducing these much. wonderful thank artists. Thank you, Mimi. So I believe we don't have any questions, but you know where to find us if you oh, have any come up in a, in a day or so. I'd just like to thank all of you for, for joining us here.